Okay, good morning. It is a Wednesday morning. We've got weather that's going to continue just as it has been. Today, San Francisco is going to be 67 degrees. Tomorrow, San Francisco, mm, 67 degrees. San Jose, 80. Tomorrow, 80. Livermore, 84. Tomorrow, Livermore, 85. So temperature up in Sacramento, upper 80s, low 90s. Deep marine layer. That's the story. And uh, it's a classic summer pattern for sure. We're going to see the marine layer deepen and shallow, deepen and shallow. So this is the marine layer in real time. Well, not in real time, but it's in, it's in it's, you can see it, right? We're going to look at a profiler. So you just kind of, I want you to imagine when we look at the profiler, I want you to imagine that this area here, this foggy area, when we look at the cross section of this, which is the profiler, we're going to see blues in here, right? And then when you get above the top of the cloud cover, you're going to see yellows. And that's what we're doing. We're just seeing the that difference, that line between the top of the marine layer and the uh, free atmosphere, if you will. Um, that line moves, that depth. And that depth this morning is pretty deep. It's a couple thousand feet or 1,800 feet. And that's not up over Mount Tam, but up over most of the coastal hills. And so everybody's cool. It's going to be a nice day. just is. Allergy is still a thing. Definitely noticing allergies for sure, um, but not as bad as they were. Let's put a loop on this because you can and it's fun and it's interesting to see how the, the sort of the fluid dynamics of the marine layer and how it actually plays out if it is going to go for us. Maybe it's there it goes. OK, and you can see the depth, too. And as you look down the coast, you can see I think that's yeah, that's Montero Mountain down here, right? Santa Cruz, way down here, obviously, but you can see the coastal range, can't you? The higher hills of the coastal range. But up north, we've got the, and, and down down by Fort Ord, we've got a 1,800-foot deep marine layer. This is the profiler. Let me put this on here. Time travels from right over here to left over here. So this is now. So last night, it got really deep. Or yesterday at this time, it was really deep. And during the day, it shallowed out. Kind of got down to 1,600 feet deep. Shallowed out, burned off, inland areas burned off. And then last night, it started deepening again. And that's where we are now. It's not certainly not as deep as it was yesterday at this time. And, and it, But it's deep. It's up over a couple, you know, 1,800 feet. So temperatures today are going to be a little warmer than yesterday because the marine layer is a little, little shallower. Now, that's what's going to happen all this week. The marine layer is this, this depth of this marine layer is going to go, it's going to go deep, shallow, deep, shallow, deep, warm, cold, cool, warm, cool, warm, right? Okay. So the more we look at that, the more it makes sense, because I, I know that's one that, that throws people th this um, graphic. So now we're looking at the actual marine layer from the satellite that goes west. And what do you see? Well, that's awesome stuff. Um, sort of an eddy offshore here. When it's that low or is that weak system kind of glides to the south. There's the deep marine layer up over the coastal hills in the North Bay. Santa Cruz out into the Salinas Valley, all the way down to Southern California, where you've got fog and low clouds pushing well inland. Again, marine layer down there, probably easily 1,000, 1,800 feet deep. And it, a lot of it has to do with this low. See this low spinning off here? This, this brought thunderstorms yesterday, which was not really anticipated by any of us. Um, but they got them. And this low is still slowly moving on. And so the potential for thunderstorms in this area does exist, northeast or southeast California. And then up around Lake Tahoe looks super clear. And you can already see the fog burning back in this uh, Salinas Valley and down towards, um, I guess that would be down towards San Martin. Isn't that awesome? So cool seeing that. So that's a, the, the visible satellite image. I'm doing kind of a quick one today because I am going surfing. I know. It's been about two. It's been about two or three weeks. Uh, uh, that's a long time. Um, okay, so these are the forecast size for today, which can be carried over to tomorrow. So the next few days, very similar. And all we're watching, right? This is it's a summertime thing. Uh, there's other things, but that marine layer expands and it contracts. Today it contracted a little bit, so it's going to be a little warmer. Chico, 98 degrees. Fresno, 95. Bakersfield, 95. 82 up towards Santa Rosa. Um, and then in the next couple of days, it'll kind of open up again and temperatures are cool. But these are subtle, subtle changes. And the subtle changes can be picked out in the satellite or in the um, GFS, Verticity, because you can see the 
jet stream kind of just right down over the top of us. This is just right through Saturday, right? See that? See that instability? It's not a lot of instability. See that low kind of spinning right there? That's kind of that's enough to that's enough to keep heat waves away. And so what I just showed you is that's through next week, I guess. Is that through Sunday? Yeah, that's through June 10th. But we're not. There's no heat waves coming. There are no heat waves coming. We can take a look at the brain potentials down here. That's that system. This is the GFS, sea level pressure, and rainfall forecast. And this is that, that low that we circled down there. And so you kind of go, oh, yeah, look at you know, kind of this afternoon. It gets going a little bit. And then, yeah, and it just kind of rolls on out. So, yeah, pretty quiet, except something. there's something right I think, oh, right here, that's interesting. That's on June 9th. We'll see what happens there. That sort of looks like a little bit of a weather system. And just kind of busy. It's just a busy, I get, from when I look at this, I'm just rolling through time now. And none, none of this is probably going to happen. There's a clip to the north. But it just shows you that we are still in a flow that's going to keep it from being really hot, um, in really any heat waves. That's what I look for, especially this time of year in terms of fire, you're always concerned. But when you see those 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 pulses go through the jet stream, that and tells you, okay, well, the high isn't able to set up well. It, the pulses can create strong offshore flows, especially in the in the um, late summer, early fall. And that's another that's that's kind of our fire season. But and right now the, the weather looks kind of, you know, kind of Kind of pleasant classic summer today and beyond into the weekend but again if you're going to the coast you're going to take a jacket for sure this is ooh, this is mount whitney and cloudless today which is interesting because they had a few showers up there yesterday uh and they're going to remain cloudless for the next for most of the weekend one of the things we can pick out from mount shasta today is the smoke that is kind of seeing the upper atmosphere that's from this fires up in manitoba and the circulation. We've had smoke in the area. It's high level smoke. So it's not stuff that's not down low because it's way up there. It's way up there in the in the upper troposphere. And so it's not down at the ground, but it, it's creating a, a haze. And that's what you're seeing at Mount Shasta today in parts of Redding and up in the Northern Valley. So keep an eye on that. We'll go take a quick look at skiing because there are still skiing going on at Mammoth. I just, I'm so impressed by these guys. I feel like, I feel like they just put a loop on it. Like I'm amazed that many people are still skiing because it's warm, right? It's going to be in the 70s and probably the 70s up there today. Um, and then Pleasure Point, there's some surf, but smaller. The swell's been dropping. What can I tell you? Uh, what a, oh, what a, no, no, I can't tell you. There's that shark attack in Montero. We, we got to talk about that at some point. If I, I'm not, I don't, um, I'm not going to get into it today, but I, I do know some folks involved in that. So we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about white sharks too, because the truth is there's a lot of them, but they don't bug us that much. We just, they do occasionally. And when they do, it makes news. This, these are the girls. And I noticed earlier this morning, their one's flown. I can't tell if Gizmo's flown yet. I had a report that Gizmo kind of got off the ground. Sunny has flown and has been staying in a nest down the way a little bit. They have a kind of an, a, a, a secondary nest that that, um, that dad kind of hangs in sometimes. And then, but anyway, Sunny's been flying. Gizmo, I don't believe has yet. This is as of this morning on Wednesday, June fourth. But it's fun to watch them. They're kind of playing house, right? They're putting down the putting down the sticks and everything. Not fun. I know it's been awesome to watch this whole thing. I think it's such a. I think it should be mandatory for like school children to have to watch these guys at least an hour a day as they go from eggs to baby birds to fledge to we all because I've learned a ton about my my whole family. Everybody I know who I've said hey watch this watches it, and you get really attached to them, and you understand nature, and you understand people. Maybe a little bit. You understand. It's just a very interesting, important thing to pay attention to. Because this goes on all day and all night and all species all over the world, blah, blah, blah. And this is this is what we this is what's important. Right. So, OK, have a great day. I will get back with you tomorrow uh, and uh, we'll see you then. Take care.